Hi everyone, uh, my name is Daniel Dixon and I'm a PhD candidate at Northern Arizona University. Um, I'm really excited to be presenting at AZ Call 2021 this year. Um, even though we are virtual, it's still really great to be able to engage with the local um, call community. So I'll be presenting about a method methodological framework for analyzing the language in digital games. So let's get started. Follow me. So if you've read a lot of digital game-based language learning research, you know that researchers often praise the massive amounts of contextualized second language input that games can provide L2 learners. But there hasn't been a whole lot of research that's actually analyzed this input or more generally described the linguistic environments within digital games. So this is an issue that's been noted in the literature, actually. Um, there remains an outstanding need for meticulous empirical studies that critically evaluate the environments games provide for L2 learning. Um, and that comes from Thorne et al. 2012. Other researchers have noticed that there's been uh, a, a stark decline or, or a large spike in language use and language exposure during gameplay, depending on what the player is doing. So the problem is that a lot of the digital game-based language learning research hasn't really accounted for the variation in language use and language exposure associated with the many different contexts found within in a single game or across populations of games. So just to be clear, uh, I'm talking about the language in digital games, not the language used by the players. As many of you probably know, especially on, uh, on PCs, the language options are pretty vast for a lot of games. Uh, some as many as 15 to 20 languages that you can play a game in. So that's potentially hundreds of hours of authentic and engaging L2 input. Um, but it's important to note that the analysis that I'm going to talk about today was done on the English version of the games. And so I draw a lot on Bybrin Conrad's 2019 reg register analysis, which uses corpus linguistic tools and methods to analyze situations of language use. And this is what Bybrin Conrad call registers. So there's a couple steps in register analysis. So the first thing to do is to identify different registers through a situational analysis. And in a situational analysis, you look at different situational characteristics within a language use domain. Once you've identified these registers, then the next step is to compile a representative corpus of text for each register. And then you can do quantitative linguistic comparisons across registers and across other corpora. Um, and then the final step would be to uh, interpret your results, um, a functional qualitative interpretation of results based on the situational characteristics. So my research questions for this project was, what registers can be identified through a situational analysis of the language used in a targeted population of games, which I'll uh, tell you about that population in just a minute here. And to what extent do the identified spoken game registers compare to real world spoken language as measured by frequencies of linguistic features common in speech? So I'll go through the method now and kind of explain how I set this up and how I designed the study. So the games that I've been targeting in my research are often referred to as single player games, meaning they're not played online with massive amounts of other people like MMOs are. Uh, these are single player. They're often characterized as open world, meaning you don't have to complete objectives in a particular order. These games often involve uh, players' characters that are highly customizable avatars that you can level up as you gain experience points. And those experience points can use, be used on new abilities or spells or items and that sort of thing to make your character stronger. And anyone who's played these games, like the ones you see on the right, um, these games have extensive language use. Um, there's there's many, many hours of audio recordings voiced by real life professionals. There's also a lot of written language, you know, describing the items in your inventory. So there's so much going on linguistically in these games that I thought it'd be uh, interesting to, to kind of do a deeper analysis of what's going on with language and how it's used in games. So over the past couple of years, I've been compiling a corpus um, and my goal for compiling the corpus was to get 
texts from these games into naturally occurring, uh, recognizable, self-contained, and functional units of observation. And then I wanted to compare the spoken language in the games to that of the real world. And so this was quite a long process, but in the end, this is what my single player offline corpus or Spock um, looks like in terms of the number of words and number of texts um, in the spoken and written contrast. Now I'll talk about additional registers I identified in just a minute here, but you can see at the bottom right, this corpus is almost 5 million words and uh, just over 30,000 texts, so it's pretty large. So in order to compare it to real world spoken language, um, of course we need a comparison corpora. So for this project I used a Longman American Conversation Corpus, or LAMIC. And so I'm just going to be talking about the spoken language in the game corpus uh, in the, in the uh, linguistic analysis. Um, and I'll save the written part for, for another time because I don't think we'll have enough time to get through all that. Um, so for the quantitative part of this, when comparing the two corpora, um, I compiled a list of features that were adapted from Biber et al. 2002 and Biber 1998. And these are features that um, are common and pervasive in, in normal kind of everyday conversation based on analysis from the Longman grammar. So I thought this would be kind of a good starting place to see how similar the registers in the game are to a real world spoken register. So let's go through the results here. So again, I, I did a, the first part was to do a situational analysis to identify the different registers within games. Um, so there's four games in my corpora, and so what I did was I carried out a situational analysis and looked at the major situational characteristics that uh, Biber and Conrad 2019 talk about, at least three of them anyway. So I looked at the participants, the processing, processing circumstances, and the communi communicative purposes. And so I was able to identify six game registers that were consistent across the four games in my corpus. In my corpus. Um, the two spoken language registers are referred to as immersive speech and interactive speech. And then the four written language registers in the games are referred to as character text, quest text, tutorial text, and lore. So just to kind of go through this and how I was able to identify these, uh, basically recording the different ways in which, uh, in this case, speech was used. And really there seems to be two different, two major categories of speech in these games. So the first one I refer to as interactive speech. And so this is any unit of speech during which the player is prompted to provide input or response to an action or utterance of a non-player's character. So a non-player's character, or NPC, are the automated characters in the game. So immersive speech is a little bit different because it doesn't require any kind of input from the player. About the situational characteristics and how they're different between each one, I doubt I'll have time to go through all these, but um, if we look at, for example, the processing circumstances, you see a number two there. So again, it's interactive, so the player has to be engaged and they have to make choices uh, as they're involved in these interactive speech in instances. Usually, when the player is required to make a decision or give a response to that NPC, uh, several options will appear on the screen and usually time is paused. Not all the time, but usually time is suspended while the player processes and makes a decision. Whereas in immersive speech, you don't have um, this interactive nature. You, things are just passive, so the player is not prompted to respond. Usually these are more like a scene in a movie that just play out and the player just watches. So I probably won't have time to go into too much detail with the written registers here, but basically there's four of them. The first one, character text, is all the language use associated with things that have to do with the player's character. For example, the player's character uh, inventory or their, their skills, their attributes, things like that, that kind of describe and operationalize the powers of the player's character. Whereas quest text is related to the objectives in the games. You know, usually there's dozens and dozens of quests that you complete um, through a single playthrough in these games. And the two other written registers um, I call lore and tutorial text. So lore 
um, is often comes in the form of an in-game object, like a book or, or a message, something that the player character cannot equip. Um, it usually just gives kind of peripheral information, kind of like immersive speech. Lore usually describes kind of the history, the politics of the virtual world around you. And a lot of times this can be ignored. And then we have tutorial text. So this is usually um, uh, messages that appear towards the beginning of the game, kind of teaching the player how to play, right? But they can come all throughout. For example, uh, picking up an item, it may say you picked up so-and-so. Usually these are directed to the player themselves and not one of the characters in the game. Um, so again, uh, I'm just going to focus on the spoken language and compare, and compare spoken language um, registers to each other. And again, here's the features that I'm going to quantitatively analyze uh, on the left. I wrote Python code uh, developed specifically for this research uh, that counted the use of each one of these features and how many times they occurred in a text. And because the text from uh, the different registers in the game and the real world um, text based on real world spoken data, because they're at such varying lengths, I normed the rate of occurrence to 1,000. So basically, you take the raw frequency uh, of a feature, divide it by the total words, and multiply it by 1,000 for each text. So that gives you a normed rate of occurrence for each feature. So in order to visualize the results of this analysis, I compared the real-world spoken data to interactive speech and immersive speech. So in blue, you're seeing the interactive speech register from the games. And in orange, you're seeing the immersive speech uh, register from the games. And that line at the bottom represents the real world spoken data. So the further that those bars are from that line, the more differences there are in the frequency of features. So basically, the closer it gets to that line, the more similar that register is to real-world spoken language. So just to kind of give a big picture overview here, I took the difference in feature frequency and got a mean average for that for both interactive and immersive speech registers. So on the left, you see the interactive versus the real-world spoken data. And we can see that the D value is 0.88. So that's a pretty large difference whereas immersive speech was found to be more similar to real-world spoken speech. Perhaps games that employ mechanics like immersive speech can be more valuable for L2 development than other types of games, right? But, we, of course, we need to further test this before we can make any definitive conclusion. So, really, the next step in the register analysis would be to go through these features and look at why there's such a difference between the two game registers as well as the real-world spoken registers. Um, that way we can have a qualitative um, interpretation of results. So I'm still working on that part, so I don't uh, have much to say about that right now. But I also want to just quickly mention that future research can build on these initial findings and identify additional registers within either the same population of games or to a broader population of games. Well, thank you for watching this presentation. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to check it out, and I look forward to talking to you all more uh, during a Z call and the uh, question and answer sessions that uh, that will follow. Thank you.